Hey everyone, this is Lisa from TRW, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a two-color rhinestone true type font in Silhouette Studio. So this is something that we're going to input in our point size, but we don't need the TRW Design Wizard to use a rhinestone true type font. So if you're ready to learn how to use these fonts in your Silhouette Studio software, then let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so right here, I'm gonna open up this new tab. And so I am going to be using TRW45. So that is an athletic font. Let me minimize this and show you. So we have TRW45 two color athletic rhinestone true type font. So you can see it's on our website here. And then we have some information on it as well. So it's about, um, <clears throat> pardon me, it's about two, and a, two inches high, 2.1. And so it's a great font for like your shirts. So let's go ahead and we're gonna type out football because right now it's football season. So the trick with doing a two color font is that one color is one case, so uppercase, and another color is another case, so lowercase. So we're combining that feature along with the sizing of our rhinestone fonts. So let's go ahead and type out football. <clears throat> and you make sure when you type it out, you do your first one in the same case. So you're always typing in all lowercase or all uppercase, okay? So we have our football here. I'm gonna go ahead and select it. So we're gonna do, just change it blue so you can see a little bit easier. And then we're gonna do TRW45 over in the font. So our rhinestone fonts have an SF and an RF version. SF has a box around it. Let me click on it for you. This has a box around your text. Now this is the version you would use if you're cutting out your letters individually to put together an alphabet. This is something that I totally recommend if you're doing a lot of custom works. So instead of typing out a whole last name that you're never gonna use again, you can type out the whole alphabet, piece the names together, and then you have that versatility over and over again. But I don't need that right now. We're gonna go over and do the RF or real font. Now, if you look at this, my font is only four inches wide and those little circles are really small. So those are not the right, size, the right size circles for my rhinestones. So we're gonna go over and jump back to the website and I'm gonna go to this new tab here. And so you'll have two ways that you can find your rhinestone uh, point size. Sometimes it's down on your product, but this one specifically doesn't have it. So we're gonna go over to the rhinestone world, go to support. And then under production and design, we have rhinestone TTF sizing guide. Now this is really useful because we have our rhinestone fonts in here. You can search it using the bar up here. And then there's also a button at the bottom right here to report a missing font or error. So let's say there's a font, we're human, we didn't update the list. You can report a font that you need the point sizing for. So let's go ahead and search it. So we're gonna search 45. So there we go, tier W45 two color. So if we were using SS6 stones, we'd set our point size to 132. I'm using SS10, so I'm gonna set it to 176. So let's jump back to Silhouette Studio. So we have our font selected here, and let's type in 176. Not 178, 176. Okay, so we have a nice bigger size with this. So now we need to type our second case. So let's go ahead Let's do our mouse. So what I like to do is I'm gonna make a copy of it. So I'm gonna click on it one time so I have this gray box. I'm gonna hover over it and I'm gonna hold down the Alt button on my keyboard. This makes a little plus sign, click and drag. So now we've carried over the point size, the, the color and the font. So now I can retype in here. So I did lowercase now. Let's do our caps lock, football. So now we type that in uppercase and I'm just gonna click on it and change the color to see the contrast. All right, so the way this is gonna go, we're, we're just gonna stack them right on top like this. So I'm just gonna use my select zoom to zoom in. And then super basic, there's nothing fancy about this. I'm just gonna use my arrow keys to align it. Now, um, if you were to go and align it centered like this with this button right here, it is gonna be slightly off and that's just because of how the outlines are set up because they don't, you know, there's a little bit more on one side. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna zoom back in click on this inner part and just go ahead typical just bring that down and have it fit in there so i'm happy with that placement and so now what i'm going to do before i get going and cut is i'm going to make sure my holes are the right size um, i have started to cut my rhinestone templates slightly bigger so what i'm going to do is i'm going to double check the size of my rhinestones so i'm just going to click on this outside one for the blue 
So right now, this is still text. We can retype it, change the font, do all of that. We want to convert this over to an object, so basically we have a bunch of circles that are put together in a pattern. So I'm gonna right click, make compound path. So now you can see that, that select box got a lot closer because the select box is the size of your text box. And so now that it's not text, it can be really close to your object. So now it's a compound path, meaning that I have a bunch of lines that are together as one big object. And now I'm gonna right click and release compound path. So now it's basically breaking apart every line and saying, hey, each line or each circle in here is its own object. And you can tell that that has happened because each circle has a little square around it. So I'm gonna click off to deselect everything. And now I'm gonna click on one square, I mean one circle. So you'll see that my circle is 0.128 inches wide. So you can cut that straight off the bat for your SS10 rhinestones, but I have liked making my rhinestone slots in my in my flock a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna select my entire design, including the pink on the inside because I want to scale everything up the same proportion. And I'm just gonna go ahead and very gently drag this corner out to make my design just slightly bigger. So I drag that out, click off, and now I'm gonna zoom back in and let's click on this circle. So now let me click a bottom one. It's at 0.132. So not a huge difference, but I do like cutting around 0.132 or 0.135. So I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna kind of bring this back over and I'm gonna group this entire design together. <clears throat> So I just hit Control G on my keyboard. So now I am ready to cut. So we're gonna go over, go to my box. I'm gonna draw a box around my entire design. And this is really important because we are gonna use this box to line up our colors in production. So let's go ahead, let's select both of these. I'm just gonna use this button at the top here to center them. And you can see it got a little bit off center. And the reason why is my pink is still text. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna ungroup it. And then let's zoom in right here. Okay, so you can see if I click on this pink, we have this really big text box. We do not want that, so I'm gonna right click, make compound path, and now that's nice and tight. And now we can go ahead and group our entire design together. So let's go ahead, select all of this in here. Right click, group. So now we'll go ahead and we can align it. Perfect. And now we are all set to start our cutting. So we are gonna be cutting on Magic Flock material. Uh, we do not need to mirror the design because we're doing a rhinestone template. So we're gonna go over and we're gonna go to the send panel. So you can see all of our text has that bold red line. So really you're gonna cut one color font if you cut it like this. But what you wanna do is you wanna go over to your action by right here, go to fill, and we are going to select by fill color. So I'm gonna check this box here for no color. That is our box. We always want that to be checked because that's how we line up our designs. And so let's say we wanna cut the pink first. Let's uncheck the blue. So now we have the areas selected that we wanna cut. We just wanna go back to our material and adjust our material. So I'm gonna go right here, click this drop down. I'm gonna choose my preset for Magic Flock. So if you um, have not programmed your own custom cut settings, especially for Magic Flock, I highly recommend doing that. Um, I have a video that's gonna go up in the corner, and then I'm also going to put it in the description how to program your own custom cut setting because I think that's one of the most invaluable tools for using in Silhouette Studio. All right, so we have that set right there. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that blue to Magic Flock as well while I'm here. So let's go ahead, select that, and we're all set to go. So once you're set to go, you're gonna load in your material, press cut, you're gonna cut this pink, and then once you're done, uncheck the pink, check the blue, and then you'll have your material loaded, cut that, and then you're all set to go. So that is my quick tutorial on how to set up your two color rhinestone true type font. It's super easy, it's a great process to know, and hopefully it helped you learn a little bit more about using rhinestone true type fonts in Silhouette Studio. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos on Silhouette Studio or any type of production video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're uploading all the time and we can't wait to help you out.